Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to quickly do a supplement to the big O notation video that we did a little while ago. And this is just going to go over some of the common big O notations, as well as some example problems that follow that big O notation. And the spirit of this video is going to be helping you with coding interviews. So for my experience in both interviewing for coding jobs and also interviewing other people for coding jobs, I found that the usual coding interview format goes like this. They give you some kind of problem and then you code some kind of solution. And then assuming the solution works, they'll ask you, what is the time complexity? So another way to ask that is what is the big O notation of your solution? And then they'll ask you, can you do better? And then you return to step two, where you try to code a more efficient solution. They ask you about the time complexity of that. And you just keep going until you hopefully arrive at the best case scenario. So the focus of this video is going to be on step three, which is getting you comfortable with instantly coming up with the time complexity without having to think about it too much. Because coding the solution, step two is definitely difficult, but step three is also a place where I've seen a lot of people struggle, including myself. So we're just gonna go through all of the common ones from best to worst. So the first one is called order of one. So this is a big O of one, and this is called constant time. So for example, we're dealing with a list here, and that list is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you have a solution to something that is order of one, that means that the amount of time that your operation takes does not change at all as the size of the list gets bigger. So a concrete example here is getting an element of the list given the index. So this piece of code is simply saying that for each size list I'm considering, so I'm considering various sizes of lists from 10 to 10 million, I'm going to create the list and then I'm simply going to get the last element of the list. So in Python, if you haven't seen this notation, this is just getting the final element of the list. And then I plot here all my n values. So again, n is the size of the list I was considering. And then the y value is how many seconds it took to get the last element of the list. Now, if you haven't studied computer science before, you might think that as the list gets bigger, it might take longer because we might have to go search for that last element. And that should take longer if the list gets bigger. But that's not exactly how it works under the hood. Just know that when you access a element of a list, by index, it takes constant time, no matter how big the list is. If you have the index, you can get it in the same amount of time. So this is an order one operation. Another very, very popular one is getting the value in a dictionary or hash table by key. So if you're not familiar with these things, I actually have a video on dictionaries and hash tables, which I'll link in the description, but they're basically just data structures where if you have some kind of key, you can get the value associated to that key in constant time. So this piece of code I've written here is very symmetric to the piece of code above. It's just that I'm using a dictionary D as my data structure instead. So you can see the same exact result. No matter how big the list gets, the amount of time it takes to get a value given the key does not increase at all. It just stays constant. So that's constant time. The next one is log time. So that's O log N. And you'll know this by getting an idea that you're cutting your work in half or in thirds on each iteration of your algorithm. The most classical example of this is called binary search, which I also have a video for, which I'll link below. But in binary search, you have a sorted list. So the assumption is that your list is sorted and you're looking to check whether some value exists or does not exist in your list. So uh, without going too deep into it, the basic way binary search works is you cut your list in half, you see which side your target element would have to be on, and then you throw the other half away. And then you just keep going. You take the half the list that you retained, and then you cut it in half again and again and again. So you can see that your amount of work on each iteration is getting cut in half. And if you get a spirit of that, or if it's in thirds or in fourths, this is going to be log time. So we did binary search here, and we plotted it, and you can see it follows this log curve. So as the number of examples gets bigger, yes, the time it takes gets bigger, but it's not going up that much. It's just going up in a logarithmic fashion. The next one, and probably the most easy to understand, is called linear time. Linear time basically is any example where if the size of your list or the size of your problem doubles, then the amount of time that it takes to solve the problem is going to double. And I've just kept it really simple here. All we're doing is taking the sum of a list. So you can imagine that if you have a list of numbers and you don't know anything about those numbers, the amount of time it's going to take to add up all those numbers is just going to go up linearly as the size of the list gets bigger. So you can see the graph down here as the size of the list gets bigger. So for example, going from 200 to 400, we roughly double the amount of time that's going to take, resulting in this linear curve. The next one is one that may be a little bit confusing and because people haven't really seen the shape of this graph before, but this is linear rhythmic time. And this word doesn't come up too much, so it's okay if that's not familiar, but 
this is big O of n log n. So notice that this is worse than big O of n because there's an extra factor of log n, but it's not as bad as the next one we'll look at, which is big O of n squared, because log n grows at a much slower rate than n. So the most classical example of this is sorting a list of numbers. So for example, if you look up algorithms like merge sort, you'll find that the big O time complexity of sorting a list of numbers is O n log n. And the big question is, what does this look like? Because we're not really familiar with this graph typically. This is what it looks like. And if you didn't stare at it for too long, you would think this linear. But you can see a slight curvature here. And to help you out, I've plotted all three of these growth rates against each other. So the green bottom line is log n. The blue line here is n. And the upper line here is n log n. So although it looks linear at first glance, if you stare at it for a while, you can definitely see the slight curvature. And that's the curvature that leads to it growing at a faster rate than n. Okay, so the next one is called quadratic time, also one that I think is easy to understand. This is also pretty easy to identify. It's basically whenever you are looping over all pairs of elements in your problem or pairs of things in general. So this is a very easy case. I'm just going for i in range some number. For j in range that same number, I'm just doing i plus j. But the basic thing I want you to take away from this is that a problem whose solution is big O of n squared is where if you double the number of elements in your problem, you are going to quadruple or times four the amount of time it's going to take. An easy way to think about this is if you have, let's say, 10 elements in your list and you want to iterate over every pair, then there are 10 times 10 or 100 pairs to think about. Now, if you double the amount of things in your lists, so now you have 20 elements. How many pairs do you have now? Well, that's 20 times 20 or 400. So you went from doing operation on 100 pairs to 400 pairs. So that's times four. So this is less preferable than the n log n that we looked at before. So the graph looks like this. And as you can see, this is a pretty clear parabola. The last one we'll look at is exponential time. So this is a case that you definitely want to avoid if possible. And one of the most classical examples is computing the nth Fibonacci number. So if you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, it's just a very intuitive sequence that starts with two ones. And then every next number is achieved by adding up the previous two. So I'm going to add up that one and one to get a two. Then I add up the most recent two numbers to get three, then I get five, then I get eight, and so on. So it's pretty easy to understand. Now, if we coded this in the most intuitive way, which is the piece of code you're seeing here, this is literally coded from the definition I just said. Uh, this is actually the worst way to code this problem. So I won't go into how to make this better. If there's enough interest in that, I can make a video on that. But the growth rate of this looks like this. So although this might look like a parabola, it's actually looking more like an exponential curve, which means that if you add just one more example, then the amount of time it takes to solve this problem is going to double. You add another example after that, it's going to double again. So this is probably worst case scenario. So now to close this video out, let's just look at all of these growth rates together on the same graph to really just get an idea about how bad some of them are compared to others. So I plotted all of them together just for some numbers between 50 and 200. And looking at this range, they don't look too bad. You can see they all kind of look close to each other, but you can really see the magnitude of the problem when I plot on a bigger range. So as the number of things in your list or in your problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you can barely see this blue, orange, and green line, which are big O of one, big O log N, and big O N. So they're all kind of insignificant compared to the growth rate of the red line, which is N log N, which itself is insignificant compared to the growth rate of this parabola or big O of N squared. And all of these are very insignificant compared to the extreme growth rate of this exponential. So this is why you're looking at this graph really tells a story about why it's important to code your solution in the most efficient way. Because for small numbers of examples, it really doesn't matter. They kind of look like they're in the same ballpark. But you can see that as the number of things gets bigger, as the number of clients in your business or the number of data points in your machine learning algorithm gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it starts to make more and more of a difference the way you coded your problem. This is going to be the make or break between if your code is going to run in a reasonable amount of time, like an hour, or if your code just can't finish until the history of the universe would be over. So this is just a couple of common big O notations. Any questions are obviously welcome in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.